hello hello my friends it's me kp i'm here in my studio the moon and the maker home of art foamies and i'm here for art for me fun friday because <laughs> yes it is friday um so i'm so excited to um announce to you all i think you've already heard the news we did start a new pop-up shop today yes happy friday we started a new pop-up shop um, featuring Megan Quinlan. Yes, she is back by popular demand and with some really great new images. I'm super excited to be here um, and sharing with you her designs. I hope that you have all visited Megan to see her amazing examples and her, her journals and just um, some of the art that she has been sharing on her pages so um, please make sure that you go over and give her some art foamy love I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you all of her designs and just chit chat with you I wanted to just mention um, really quickly I'm sorry I'm feeling a little under the weather um, today uh, we will not be having an after party I did not want to miss because um, the good thing about art foamies is that even if you're not feeling a hundred percent you can still have fun <laughs> So, um, and I did take a little bit of allergy medicine, so if I'm even more forgetful than usual, um, please forgive me. Um, also, not I don't know if you've noticed, I am in my new studio space, um, and I'm loving it, although I'm not sure how I feel about the extra good lighting. <laughs> I'm going to turn the camera around, and we're going to talk about Megan, um, in a good way, of course, and all of her new images, and... Again, we'll talk about pop-up shops, and um, you know that they are sort of limited editions, so they're only going to be available for two weeks. Now, we did make them available for two weeks instead of just one um, because I, I have been a little bit remiss. I think most all of you know that my middle daughter just had a major surgery um, back in June, June 14th. Um, it's been a long recovery, so I was out for a while with that, and then I moved my studio, so I have just been, um, you know, a little inundated, so I did not have a chance to promote this pop-up shop as much as I would have liked to, but you know what, sometimes that's how it is when you're in business for yourself and you have a small business, um, so we went ahead and opened up the pop-up shop for two weeks instead of one, okay? Um, no, it's okay, Cindy. <laughs> we, you know, we all go through these days. I'm very excited. I have, I admit, I've still been in the studio playing the entire day, um, which has felt really good. Um, <clears throat> I am sad to report that I missed my farm day. Um, so it's really sad about that, but I just felt like with, um, all this, you know, sort of allergy symptoms that I've had, I didn't think it was probably the best idea. So, Anyway, without further ado, let me introduce to you Megan Quinlan's new, newest collection of art foamies. I'm going to show you, there are five different sets, okay? Um, so I'm going to go through, I'm going to show you just pictures, and then we're going to play a little bit. I'm going to show you some um, examples that I made using her beautiful images, okay? Yes, oh my gosh. Um, so... <clears throat> So Deb, those other critters are from her son, Connor. Um, they're actually Connor's critters. So you can talk to you can talk to her um, about possibly offering those. You know, that's really up to Megan. I don't and <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I have to say I'm not a hundred percent sure if Megan's gonna be able to pop in and join us for a bit tonight or not. But um, I just want to say that um, I love Megan's imagery and thank her so much for, uh, you know, for loving our product enough to put her faith in us and have her beautiful designs on Art Foamies, okay? <clears throat> so let me stop for a second because I did not say hello to everybody and I would like to welcome each and every one of you. Catherine is here and it looks like she gets the gold star tonight. <laughs> Christina is here, Terry Moore, Stephanie, Cindy, AG is here, Deborah, Pamela, Donna, Deb Peak, Linda, Patty's Vintage Shop, which is Patty Hotter. Please make sure that you check out her shop and give her a hello from us. She will also always remind you to please like and share this video. So we appreciate you so much, Patty. Thanks for being here. Wendy is here. Christina 
Um, yes, I think you might need to refresh your browser. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. So um, if somebody could tell Christina Creative Soul Art to please restart her browser. <laughs> D Keels, howdy from East Texas. Yes, it has been crazy weather. And for all my friends in these boiling hot states, I'm thinking about you. I hope that your AC and your power stays on. Um, we have had some really, really rough days here too. But I will say today was pretty beautiful. So, so grateful for <clears throat> any of the days that we get that are, you know, a reprieve from crazy weather. Cecilia is here. And um, yes. <laughs> okay. Good, Deb. Thank you so much. Thank you, as always, for your support and your interest, not only of us, but from, from our contributing artists and our guest artists. So, um, Let's go ahead and I'm going to just show you the, this is um, the collection. Uh, I have a couple little extras here because if you recall, if um, you ordered in June, this was our freebie and it <clears throat> was designed by Megan Quinlan. So it goes really well with a couple of her design. Well, actually with all of her designs, but specifically with one set in particular. Excuse me. Okay. So. First of all, since we started off with the little freebie mushroom from June, let's talk about her mushroom set. And it is, you know what, I'm not, I'm going to have to go on my phone so that I can see the names because I'll screw them all up for sure. <laughs> okay, so we have Megan Quinlan's Mushy Maiden. <laughs> Mushy Maiden. Oh, that's pretty funny. And it is a set. Actually, all of these are sets. So with the Mushy Maiden, you are going to get the girl with the mushroom cap and a little mushroom to go with her. And then, of course, don't forget the little mushroom duo from June makes a wonderful addition. And so here she is stamped out. Now, I will always show you just a stamping. Uh oh, I'm getting those lines on my computer again. I don't know what's happening with that. All right, hopefully that's a little bit better. Okay, so um, Monica Piper, welcome. So again, this is Mushy Maiden. Um, she stands about four and a half inches tall. Let me get my let me get my ruler here so I can <clears throat> tell you. So she stands. Uh, I'm so I stand corrected. About five inches tall. And about, oh, two and a half, a little over two and a half at her widest point. And then the little mushroom that goes with it is two inches tall, a little over two inches tall by about one and three quarter inches wide. Okay. So, um, and I do have a little sample that I've been playing with. I, again, have been really enjoying myself. And I thought maybe we'd finish this together this evening. So here she is, the magic mushroom girl. And I had a lot of fun with this. And I, I have to admit, I really like the color palette, but I am considering adding a little bit of violet. So we'll see about that, okay? <laughs> Bernadette, welcome. So again, I did incorporate the Mushy Maiden, the freebie from June, and the corresponding little mushroom there, okay? Cynthia, greetings. Thanks for coming. We are introducing Megan Quinlan's second pop-up shop, so we're super excited that she is sharing a new collection for the next two weeks, all right? So again, that's Mushy Maiden Set. Um, the next one, and I do, you know, I have a few. I did not get a chance to work with all of them, although over the next two weeks, I definitely will be. So the next one here on my table, and again, they do come in sets. And these are garden gals. Okay. So these are the garden gals. Again, I keep getting those lines. It's time for a new camera. I need to tell Mr. Moon to find me a new camera because this one just keeps um, doing this weird stuff. So sorry about that. All right. So garden gals um, and both of them, these do correspond with Megan's last collection. So they're going to be approximately similar sizing. So that works out really well for any, you know, special applications that you're doing. If you're doing um, stuff with her original motifs or, you know, you're going to order her new patterns, 
Um, these are all going to go great with each other. Okay. So this one stands about four and a half tall by about mm, two and a quarter wide at its widest point. This one a little taller for a mm, little over four and a half by just two and a half wide. Again, garden gals. And here they are. Now, sadly, I haven't, and even though she is, like, she's one of my favorites, and for some reason, I did not yet stamp her, although I did want to share with you, this is something totally unrelated, well, not totally unrelated, it's related, however, <laughs> um, Mary Lynn Kelly, oh my goodness, I think this is from her original collection, she um, has these flowers in her original collection, and I think they will go fantastic together. So if you're ordering up Megan's Garden Gals, go ahead and grab yourself one of these Marilyn Kelly. Oh, let me look up the um, name of that stamp just because it really called to me. Um, let's see, Marilyn. It's just called Wildflowers, and here it is here. You can see it. And I just think they really complement each other. And I think they would go so well together. So tonight when I stamp her, I am going to um, incorporate this stamp. The other one I wanted to show you, which we'll move to. Well, I'm going to show you this sample that I started using one of Megan's Garden Gals. And then, of course, how perfect is this um, little sprig from her original motif set okay so if you have megan's original motif set you're gonna want to incorporate these two together because look at that okay unity and variety friends i'm really happy with the way she's already coming together <clears throat> um and i i love very different color palette for me but i i'm really enjoying it so yes right so the other one I'm going to show you right now, and I need to pull up another one because I am bummed about this. I couldn't find my set of um, wings, so I'm going to have to make myself a new set of Gypsy Soul ribbon wings. If you look at these ribbon wings, they are going to go so well with her curly girls, okay, specifically this curly girl which I have stamped here. I started a Rolodexy and I was like, oh, I need my, I need my ribbon wings, but I couldn't find them anywhere. <laughs> I bet you know that feeling. So anyway, here she has started. And this is one of the new um, Rolodexy shapes uh, in our shop. It's the stacked Rolodexies and this is the tallest um, arch. Okay. So of course I couldn't let, uh, let, the day go by without starting a Rolodex using some of Megan's girls because they're perfect. I love having these um, like in the back so that they can sort of look over some of the other sm smaller, shorter Rolodexes, right? So again, if you have those Gypsy Soul ribbon wings, I think it's going to be so, so cute with these curly girls. And you can turn either one of them uh, you know, into an angel or, or a fairy or whatever you want. All right. So that is the set of curly girls. And I do love, love that queen again. Here she, here they are again, approximately the same sizes. This one is, oh, about five inches tall by almost three at the widest point. <coughs> Me. And um, about the same with the with the loopy girl. Okay, uh, five by oh two and a quarter. All right, so that's the set of the curly girls. And here is a piece I started. Again, I have not yet. Uh, completed a lot of these, but I love the way she still looks. Again, incorporated with some words from our Art Comey poetry sets, which go fantastic. Um, and then another piece from origin 
from Megan's original motifs collection. Of course, again, mirror, mirroring her mark making, and it just really creates a strong unity in the piece. And so this is gonna be really, really fun to color. Right, Maxi Moon, it's okay, no no problem. Um, yes, D. thank you so much. Um, I love that stamp too. <clears throat> so, let me pull out the um, last little page here of Megan's work, okay? We still have one more set. It is a collection of five sets. Um, and this, of course, I think everybody must, it's a must have, okay? Because her motifs, her patterns are so fantastic pretty much with everything <clears throat> um you know you can really and if you've looked at megan's uh work in her journal and her paper dolls she really incorporates these beautifully so you have five patterns um in her inimitable did i say that wrong <laughs> style and of course they go fantastic with her original motif collection which I also have here, well, most of it anyway. Here we go. That's her original motifs, if you can see those. So Bernadette says, can you please show how Sunny's hands work with Ma Megan's ladies and girls? My request got lost in her first pop-up avalanche. Yes. Um, you know what? We won't do it tonight because I don't have um, her hands here, but I will. Let me make a note of that right now. Okay, um, so that I can have them done. And we'll either do them uh, next week, because remember, we have two weeks, so we need Sunny's hands with Megan's girls. I will do it, okay? So thank you so much for the request. I really, really love and appreciate when you all make requests, okay? I know sometimes I don't always get to them, but um, a little reminder will make sure that it happens. <laughs> okay, so, um, and I do, I have your note, and I will either do it, uh, you know, for um, Daily Heart one day or next Friday for sure, okay? I won't forget. Thank you so much. <clears throat> anyway, um, so here again, and I don't have all four of these stamped out, but I think, I hope that you remember Megan's original motifs, and then these um, are her pattern play set, which is five, okay? And the largest one is, oh, a little over three inches by two, and then the rest, this one's about one and a half by one and a half. This one's about three by two one and a half, um, two by about two and a half, and let's say one and a half by about two, okay? So you can, I mean, the thing about it is though, of course, when you uh, repeat, when you do repetitive stamping, you can have whatever size you want. They make great borders, they make great backgrounds, they make great washi tape, they make great gel plate, um, you know, gel plate, play. Oh my gosh. You know, the list is just endless. And of course, um, they're just so useful for your mixed media work, right? <clears throat> Maxie, thank you so, so much. Kathy Whitney is here. Thank you so much for coming and happy Art Tell Me Fun Friday. <laughs> yes, we love them too. All right. So that is the motifs. And I will show you, I had a lot of fun just with this one little sort of tri triangle ribbon, I don't know. Um, and I did use one of my own art foamies, the simple silhouette. Again, a word from our art foamy poetry set. And then you can see in red where I stamped her triangle ribbon. Um, really love it. And I do, I have another one sort of ready to go so that I can use another one of her motifs or one, another one of her patterns, okay? So I think that'll be a really fun little series. <clears throat> Yay, D. Keel says, I was late signing in today. I was at an estate sale 
where I bought a $1 Rolodex. Woohoo! <laughs> Good deal. That is a find. I still love my Rolodexes and I hope that you had a chance to see my studio reveal um, and my Rolodex collection. I'm very excited about it. And now that I'm in my new studio, um, well, my new old studio, uh, new again, <laughs> um, I uh, am so excited to have a special place to um, keep all my Rolodexes and display them. Um, and they're not just all piled up where I can't really even get to them. So very exciting. So yeah, again, I just um, have these little four by four panels and I'm gonna do a little series using Megan's patterns. All right, and the last but definitely not least, okay, um, <clears throat> Megan did release one of her son's um, sets of artwork. Um, her son Connor is 11 and he is also an artist. And oh my goodness, we just love, love Connor's Critters. So there is a set of two. <clears throat> I hope really that you had a chance again to see Megan's um, video, Megan's YouTube video where she and Connor did some journal pages using his collection. Um, she had a whole bunch of his artwork, more than just these two, um, but these were the two that they chose for the collection. Um, she had a bunch of custom art homies created using his artwork, and I absolutely love them. I mean, this fox is so foxy, <laughs> right? And the owl, I have a special affinity for owls, um, <clears throat> and so, you know, I was really drawn to it and had a lot of fun creating this piece today using Connor's Owl. Um, this, so I, I really love it um, and I hope you do too. So I here I used Connor's Owl and then I did use uh, one of the patterns from the pattern play set, the little uh, six leaves. So uh, if you can, this is on a four by six panel and I just used a panel that I already had started um, where it was sort of just, you know, what am I going to do with this? I need to see it through. And so you can see some of the patterns underneath that sort of led to, um, to this piece. And I, I really love it and had a great time creating it. So again, um, that is the collection from Megan. The pop-up will last, uh, it just started today and it will go through August 4th, okay? So uh, again, for those of you who make a purchase of $20 or more, the freebie this month is the little niche, <clears throat> um, which also I think could work with really some of these ladies pretty nicely. I'll show you a couple pieces of art and then on August 4th the freebie will switch over okay so we will be sharing a different freebie on August 1st so maybe you break up your order and you order a little bit today and then you wait until August 1st and order a little bit then so that you can get both freebies okay um, the August uh, freebie I, I won't show it to you today but um, it's pretty cute. <laughs> anyway, it'll be too confusing. Um, this is the little niche, and here you can see it's stamped out just plain, but then I have, you know, taken um, a little white paint pen and done some embellishing, or like on this one, I took a little bit of gold and did a little embellishing, and of course, it looks great with something stamped inside. If you have a photo of your pet or, you know, of something special to you, maybe a Frida, a piece of Frida artwork, or, um, you know, some kind of uh, Milagros or something like that would look really great. All right, so really fun freebie. And again, that is with any $20 purchase. So whatever, whatever you buy. Oh, Terry, I'm so sorry. Um, I'll make sure to make a note of that. This is not usually the best place to um, let me know because obviously I do forget, but I hear I'll make a note right here. Yes. And you know what? The nice thing about that, Carissa, is that 
um, you can do that style with any stamp or art foamy that you do love. You know, um, it's just, it's a fun technique and works really well with whatever imagery. But yeah, super fun, right? There you go. Now I won't forget. <laughs> anyway, all right. So let's go ahead. Um, the first thing I want to do, actually, oh, I have one more sample to show you. I'm so excited because um, this is one of my very, I know it's crazy, but I have to just tell you that I love this little collection of circles, okay, or semi or ovals, uh, squishy circles. Um, and it was the first one I was really drawn to when I, when I got my hands on it and I was working on a project that needed a stamp almost this exact size. So I, um, I did this way before, um, I did any of the others and it is my little toothpick holder that I've been dragging around with me for years. Um, I just love it because it is older. I don't know if you can see that. It's definitely older. It's a uh, ceramic from Japan. Um, at one point, and it was just plain. At one point, it probably did have some sort of little painting or something on the front, but throughout the years, it must have come off. So I just had this little uh, toothpick holder, and I, I almost was going to throw it away. And then I said, you know what? No, I'm not throwing it away. I'm going to give it a makey over. And so I went ahead and I painted a little bit of watercolor grounds right on the surface inside this recessed area let that dry and then i stamped using my um, actually I stamped using a little bit of acrylic a little bit of acrylic or ink i can't remember now maybe a little permanent ink and then i watercolored in and then i gave it a little spray varnish and i love it now i think it looks so cute holding my little ink picks so, you know, we just love makeys around here. Um, anything that doesn't move, we will stamp. <laughs> Patty wants to know what I used to paint the owl. Um, so I did use golden fluid acrylic and a little bit of golden so flat. Um, this is sadly their discontinued color of quinacridone nickel azo gold over the top of, you know, a few different colors. Um, and a little bit of fluorescent pink in there as well. Yeah, it's pretty, you know, and I do think also the complementary colors really make it pop even more because that blue is super complementary to that orange and it really just makes it vibrant. When it was all said and done, it was actually a little bit more vibrant um, than I wanted it to be. So what I did, I actually took a little bit of this Annie Sloan uh, chalk paint wax in white and I went over it okay it doesn't turn it white it just sort of makes it a little bit milky and so I think it kind of even though it's still really vibrant it knocked it back a little bit and it also gave it a nice protective coating okay super fun and another great way to be makey D Keel says what is an ink pick <laughs> so an ink pick um, is just like a little sort of disposable almost like a i don't know a little synthetic brush okay it sort of has almost like a felt tip and i call them ink picks i actually <clears throat> have been using them and selling them since way back in the rubber moon days and it, they go great with all sorts of inks or paints lots of times i use them for cleaning up stuff or just adding little bits of ink or, you know, um, a little touch of paint where I might need it. And also when I want something that's just disposable, okay? Um, and also I will tell you, lots of times I use the backs of these for to scrape into things. They're just really handy little tools. And I'm honestly not sure. I, um, I've been trying to clean up our website <clears throat> So I'm not sure if they're listed right now. I do have, yeah, a little nib, just like a little nib, kind of like from a felt tip pen. Thank you, Maxi Moon. <clears throat> My brain isn't working um, at 100%. <laughs> not that it normally is anyway, but even less today. 
So anyway, um, handy little tools. They're they're nice price point. Um, I don't know if they're listed right now. I'll make sure because um, I have again been taking a lot of stuff down, trying to clean up um, the website, both the Moon and the Maker and Art Foamies. So I need to relist some things just to make sure you know that everything's fresh and that it, whatever I list is in stock and stuff like that. So anyway. Um, that's what an ink pick is. And that is how I first used my little Megan's patterns. And I just, I just love it. I think it is such a sort of modern, um, yet yeah, really whimsical, uh, it's really sort of mid century modern, you know, um, and it just, it really works for me. I love these motifs a lot. Um, but I'm going to have to say this is probably my favorite of the five. All right. So um, one thing I wanted to do with and for you, and if you have any other questions, I'm going to show you the sample one more time. <clears throat> yeah, Kathy, they really are. They're super handy. And I think they come, oh gosh, I think 25 in a pack and they'll last you a good long time. Okay. Lots of times too, I use them for cleaning up little things. Say if I have something that I sort of smooched, I'll get a little water or a little rubbing alcohol and sort of clean up little areas. It's really good for that. So anyway, all right, I'm going to pull these out one at a time. And if you have any questions or thoughts, I'd love to hear from you. Um, so again, this is uh, Mushy Maiden uh, with the little mushroom cap girl and uh, the little matching mushroom. <clears throat> And here she is again, just stamped in black and white. So you can kind of see um, how I really do love to use my art foamies as a base layer and really manipulate and make it sort of my own. You know, you can, the nice thing about these is that you can use it very literally. I think that if you just, you know, stamp this, color it, paint it, whatever, you can keep her face just as it is. You don't ha have to feel like you have to rework it or, you know, do anything more to it. But of course it is always fun to add your own beautiful touches and just enjoy your process. Okay. So there's the first set again, still a work in progress with my garden gal. Um, and, uh, here she is again, stamped a little more literally and, I, and I'm not done with her I'm gonna be working on her and again we have two weeks uh, together with these images so you can sort of watch some of the evolution of these pieces over over the next couple weeks and hopefully you know I'll be um, I'm been of course I would be feeling a little under the weather because I've just been go go going um, and you know, I'm so excited to be back in my studio. I was just really bummed when I woke up this morning feeling so allergic <laughs> anyway. All right. So there's garden gals, um, here again, and I am just pulling out Mary Lynn's wildflowers just because, oh my goodness, don't they go so beautifully together. It's just amazing. Um, you know, a little bit different because of course, um, this is drawn and I believe that Mary Lynn had carved these, but they do look so similar and, and will just complement each other. So fantastic. Right. So yeah, I love flowers in her hair too. Um, I think there was a, uh, there was a saying too. I think it's from, from, um, Mr. Rogers and it says grow ideas in the garden of your mind. So I think I'm going to do something definitely with that, with that saying, with that quote. So I'm going to keep that out. Um, and then we do have the curly girls and you got sort of a queen and you have just a loopy girl and I'm having a little fun again, switching up her just a little bit. You can see sort of what I did to her nose sort of started to outline or underline the eyes. You can see what it does, just giving that under, you know, stamping in a solid and then doing a paint over. And of course I sort of mimicked some of those curls in her hair. Yes, thank you, um, Catherine, yes. 
Catherine says ink picks are so useful and disposable, which is really nice. I mean, I use, I use them so, so much. Um, you know, <clears throat> uh, that I will, re what am I trying to say? Ink picks, I will reuse and reuse until the ends are pretty much obliterated. Yes, Bernadette. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, Bernadette says, um, thank you for increasing the pop-up shop to two weeks and for the preview in Patreon. You're very welcome. Thank you for being my patron and also, um, for loving the pop-up shops <laughs> anyway. All right. So, um, and then here she is and I have not done anything, uh, with this one at all. This is just stamped very literally. Um, I use Payne's gray acrylic. And then you can see I just stamped her other part, one of her old um, motifs in the background. And then a word from one of the Art Foamy Poetry sets. Yeah, Carissa says, those two girls make, make me think of Alice in Wonderland and the Queen of Hearts. Yes, me too, which is super fun because, um, oh my gosh, I just was working on a Queen of Hearts uh, theme for a swap. So super fun. Patty's Vintage Shop says, I use ink picks to clean up my nail polish when I mess up painting my nails. That is also brilliant. And I know, um, I know Patty um, Campbell is not here tonight, but that would be a great thing to tell her to tell Abby because her daughter, Abby, her daughter, uh, does fantastic nails. So really good idea, Patty. And it's funny that I didn't really think of that because, well, I never do my nails. So <laughs> I guess... I guess it makes sense. Anyway, all right. So um, one more time, the magical. Um, and again, this is using my own imagery um, from one of my art foamies and the art foamy poetry set word magical. Um, and the tri ribbon from Megan's pattern play. All right. And one more time, the owl from Connor's Critters. <laughs> Carissa, Carissa um, says, oh my God, the nail polish tip. Thanks. Yes, Patty. Thank you so much. What a great, great idea. All right. So I'm going to finish up just one of my makeys here. And I, <clears throat> as much as I feel like this could be done, I, I have had the thought all day long that I still wanted to work on it just a little bit more. Okay, so I am going to take a brown Stabilo All, and I'm also going to take a little bit of my fluorescent violet so flat acrylic, okay? Um, I just, for whatever reason, uh, this is what was calling to me, and I wanna try it. If I don't like it, you know, I can, I don't have to stick with it, okay? So, but I just, I want to sort of darken some of these lines just a little bit, clean this up a little bit, and just give it a little more definition. And again, this is a brown Stabilo All, so it is water soluble. It will, um, you know, move with water, so you have to be aware of that. But I just wanted to sort of finish this off a little bit better. And anywhere else that I feel, you know, I could go in with my brown paint. This, this uh, color here is Burnt Umber Light. It is a golden fluid acrylic. And again, I'm just going to redefine some of my mushrooms a little bit. Because I sort of colored over them using a little bit of the Titan buff. There's lots of layers on this on this baby, so I had a lot of fun creating it. So if I want to, I can also go in and sort of do a little paint over using, um, you know, a little more tight and buff if I wanted to, but I think that actually did the trick. 
were what I wanted to sort of fix, you know. And then, I don't know why, but I just really felt like a little bit <clears throat> of fluorescent violet would look really nice on this sort of help finish it off. I, you know, if I'm wrong, then it's okay. I don't have to stick with it. I can always paint back over with a little bit of the burnt umber light again. But, you know, and I, I really debated on bringing in another color, but I love the translucency of these fluorescent colors, and so I just thought it would be sort of a nice addition. I like layers. I don't like to leave things super flat all the time. And, you know, I thought it would also lend itself to the whole sort of magical effect. Using a little dry brushing to just top some of these. The nice thing about dry brushing is that if you have any texture, you know, where things are already dry, it will sort of grab that and just sort of top it off nicely. Dry brush, less is more. <laughs> no, we don't remember. And actually, it's not magic. It's magical. But I just uh, used white uh, on the word magic and left off the AL. And I don't remember because it wasn't in... Um, I have not yet done all of the organizing of my Art Foamy Poetry sets. Oop, a little heavy-handed there, so I'm just going to... Brush it off with my finger. And then I think I also actually want to take a little bit of this flow violet um, and, and just maybe use it to give some other pokey dots. Maybe even layer over the top of some of those brown. Subtle, but you know, it works. And then I might go in just for a little bit of deeper color, a little bit of this, and go ahead and sort of do a little gradient back here. Go over, going over my blue. This blue in the background is a manganese blue. I'm just going to go over some of it to deepen it a bit. Again, very light-handed and a pretty dry brush. <clears throat> and then I'm going to take just a little bit on my finger. I know it's kind of crazy. I'm not really supposed to finger paint with these, but I just want to do a little darkness at the top. Get a baby wipe to pull that back a bit. As long as my under layers are dry, then baby wiping is safe. Pull some of that off again. And 
now I'm just smushing a little bit of it around, pulling it back a little. And I love it. I think it's super cute. Um, and you know, I'm not going to lie. I could also see the tiniest, tiniest bit of green gold if I even wanted to pull in another color. And again, because of the transparency, the translucency of the colors. Now I don't have a green gold in the sofa, but I do have it here in a fluid. So let's do a little bit. Yes, yes, yes. Um, just doing it very light handed will give you just that little something, something that you didn't know it needed, <laughs> but it did. I'm just putting the smallest amount of green gold over here. Again, very light sort of, um, no, not really a super dry brush, but a very small amount on my brush. I'm just wiping a lot of it away. I just Again, this is green gold. Just brushing it on these sort of open, they almost look like mushroom, the underneath parts of mushrooms, and I'm just brushing a little bit on there. And that's it. I love it. I think it turned out really, really nice. Um, I may go in with a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> a white paint pen and add a few little dots here and there, but I'm not sure. I like to leave my, if I'm sort of happy with it, then I like to leave it um, just so that I can, you know, come back to it later and re-examine everything you know but for the most part i'm pretty happy with it and i think i'm oops and so now i'm smearing around <laughs> smearing around some wet color down here at the bottom but don't be afraid if you smeared it around you can easily pull it back all right so there she, <clears throat> there she is, my my magical mushroom maiden. All right, so <clears throat> all right. I'm sorry, just reading the comments. Anyway, there she is, finished. <clears throat> and um, I think I am going to pull this one out. I'm going to stamp it. I have another little four by six. Now I do want to say that this is super textured so i don't know how great my stamping is going to be but <clears throat> i'm going to go ahead and i am going to stamp her in hmm i guess i'm just going to go with black i am going to use a little bit of black gesso on my scrap buddy and i want to talk um to you just about something that somebody asked me earlier <clears throat> excuse me, I don't remember who, but they were saying that sometimes I get sort of a shadow image when they stamp, okay, on when they use their art foamies. The reason this is happening is because when you ink up, uh, many of the art foamies do have a little sort of border, okay, it is recessed, it's not as raised up as the image, but there is a little edge, okay. We have to do that when we're designing um, in order to keep an image all together. It's sort of like, think of a stencil. If you don't have continuous lines, like these are all broken apart, it would not stick together if we did not have an outside border. So what you wanna do is you just wanna be careful when you are inking. Now you can use a brayer or something like that to apply your ink to where you're not going to be getting 
paint or ink on your outside edge. If you're going to use a stamp or scrap buddy or a paintbrush or something like that, you just want to make sure that you're not smashing down too hard and getting ink all or paint all along that outside border. That's why a lot of times you see me actually just lay it down flat and I'll brush it sort of this way. Okay. I do tap, but oftentimes I try to tap very flat and I don't push hard because I don't want it all over those outside edges. If I know that I did get some of my outside edges inked up, you can always take a little baby wipe or an ink pick or something like that and make sure your edges are clean. Now it's very difficult to do that <clears throat> when you're using black or something, you can't really see it. So the, the other thing is that when you do stamp, you just want to use a light, firm pressure. You don't want to stamp super smashy mashy because if you do, you're bound to make contact with those outside edges and it will give you a shadow stamping. Now, sometimes even when you, you know, are very careful, even when you don't think you got anything on the outside edges and even when you stamp very evenly and nicely, you still can get a little bit of an edge. It's just one of the hazards of um, you know, of stamping in foam or not even just foam, sometimes rubbers like that too. However, you know, just keep in mind that generally you're going to be able to cover that up or cut it out. If you were making fodder the way that they teach you in fodder school, you're cutting out around the edges anyway. Um, if it's something like this, I'm going to be painting around the edges. So, you know, it doesn't always matter tremendously. Okay. So there, she stamped really nicely. I am going to go ahead and take a little bit um, of black paint or black gesso again. I'm going to just use the same black gesso. <laughs> yeah, smashy mashy, I know. No smashy mashy. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm going to just use my brush. I'm going to bring this down a bit. And I'm going to go ahead and extend that line. Okay, and I can fill that in. I'm just going to fill it in with black gesso just because it's not going to matter. I can do all sorts of, you know, embellishing or stamping, stenciling, doodling, painting, whatever in this black, this black space. So that's fine. No one is even the wiser that did it, didn't stamp all the way down. If you missed any lines, of course, you can use your, your paint pen. I would recommend a fine black paint pen. I had one right here. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? I've been so good about putting my stuff away as I've been using it. Um, I have, uh, <laughs> but it's sometimes hard to find things. Um, here it is. Yes, put right back where it belongs. Yes. Um, so D keels. Um, yeah, thank you for mentioning that. It is a good point, but we just don't put them in with the, the list of artists because they are not going to be staying, you know, it's just so temporary. So anyway, if you have any little broken lines or, you know, just lines that you want to thicken up, of course, you can use your little paint pen, and that is great right there. So <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead. Oh, gosh, I feel kind of like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and make a mask. I'm just going to use this, this one that I already have stamped. And normally I don't make masks very often um, because I, especially with like the mixed media stamping, I don't really feel the need to mask off that often, but for her, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And I don't have to be super precise, especially up here. 
and the flowers, or even really in her hair. All right, so I'm going to give her a quick little blow dry. I'm just going to hold that there. I'm going to use this and I think I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and stamp these in black as well just because again since I'm doing a lot of paint over it'll be fine. So, so cute. Oh my gosh. So, so cute. Ah, and I get, you know what would be sort of fun just to do them all over the background. I definitely could do that. It's a thought, but, oh gosh, I don't know. I'm very tempted. I don't know. I'll leave it like that for now. So, so cute, right? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be painting these. Look how good they will look together. Um, where did I put that other one already now? <laughs> I haven't moved, so it must be here close by. Yes, the black and white is just, it's so stunning. Um, but, of course, super fun to color, right? So, there you have it, my friends. I'm so excited about Megan's second pop-up shop with Art Um Puffer. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'm so sorry that you're not feeling well. <clears throat> And AG, it's Amy, right? Oh my gosh, please tell me that I'm not, that I'm remembering correctly. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm not. Um, the purple color is one of my new favorites. It is fluorescent violet. Okay, so anyway, um, I want you all to know we are not having an after party tonight. So, um... And I'm sorry about that. I'm just not feeling up to it. But tomorrow, for those of you who are going to join me in my Patreon for Super Sculpey Saturday, it's at noon. I'm going to go ahead and have a little after party in the afternoon. So if you'd like to come, I will be working on some of these. Um, and again, I will have more to show and to share next Friday as we are continuing the pop-up shop. So I'll have more samples done more, um, you know, creativity and makeys to share with you then. I want to say thank you again for all of your support, for you coming and spending time with me on Friday evenings and um, getting makey with me. So I'm going to turn the camera around just so I can say good night. Oops. And oh, this is the other thing. I am also going to be working on a little series of these because I want to do um, magical powerful and I don't know some another word fanciful or so I don't I have to go through my art foam art foamy poetry words but I already know I wanted to do powerful and then something else with uh, maybe mindful or something like that so I think these will be such a cute little set um, anyway so I'll have lots more to share with you then again thankful for all of you and let me turn this camera around. Yes, thank you so, Maxie, uh, for coming. And you all know the deal. Stay safe, stay sane, and definitely stay makey. Mm, love you all to the moon and back. I'll see you next Friday. Bye, everyone.